Good morning, I'm Tom Ferraro. I'm an ANPIA and I do weight and balances. And this morning we're gonna to demonstrate to you how we're gonna do a weight and balance on this Cessna 172K. And there's a few things people think about right away is first of all, as we all age, we all get heavier. So do airplanes. Don't ask me why, but I know we're putting fancy leather interiors in them, we're putting paint jobs on them, putting a lot of avionics in them. We're changing batteries and starters and mods, so that's part of the reason. Number two, basically a weight and balance, to get a good current weight and balance on this airplane is more than just putting it on the scale. We'll demonstrate that, but there is a couple of steps you really need to process to follow this to get started. And the first one, and you can get this information from the aircraft records, but also go out to the FAA website under aircraft registration. You want to get the end number, of course. You want to get the make, you want to get the model number, and the specific model number is really important here. A 172 isn't just a 172, in this case it's a 172K. The specifics that go with that are unique to that model number airplane, so that's what we need to look up. We get the serial number, we get the manufacturer's year, again we get the current tachometer reading or Hobbs meeting, whatever you use for your maintenance records, and uh, if you've got your weight and balance documentation that came with the manufacturer. It, it's great because it gives you all the arms and the locations. It's in your uh, equipment list in your aircraft. So that's the important stuff we're looking at. One last thing that people oftentimes forget is that if there's an STC on the airplane, for example, bonanzas are really common, you'll have tip tanks. And those tip tanks oftentimes raise the gross weight. So you need to find out if there's any STCs that are specific to the airplane that actually change the gross weight numbers. Then there's the second step, which is really just as important or even more important, is you go to the type certificate data sheets. This is a certified document that came from the manufacturer with the airplane. It tells you specifically all the details. You go to that type certificate data sheet and you can again go, I'll get it on the FAA.gov under aircraft and they'll tell you what, uh, you know, give you an option to hit type certificate data sheet and the specific uh, model number. That's where that specific model number comes in. You want to find the gross weight as published by the manufacturer. You want to find the usable fuel. Fuel is an interesting thing because this airplane holds 42 gallons of fuel of which 38 is usable. So when we weigh it with full fuel, we will deduct 38 gallons off, but the four gallons that remains stays with the empty weight of the airplane. And that's critical. Now, if you're weighing it empty, you gotta add four gallons back in. But typically, when we do aircraft like this, most of the time we'll fill it to its capacity and then subtract out the usable fuel. You wanna know where the datum is. That's the reference point where you measure all the arms to the waypoints of the aircraft. That's pretty critical for doing a weight and balance to get a good center of gravity. Determine the leveling means. In order to weigh an aircraft, you have to make it level. And again, in the type certificate data sheet, it'll tell you where the leveling means is. In this aircraft, it's the top door sill. Uh, the door, you put a level up there. You, typically what we do is we'll take a little air out of the tire until we get it level. But you wanna weigh the aircraft level. So anyway, with that information armed, we go and we'll uh, write it up on our little worksheet. And let's go away in airplane. Yeah. Ready? Ready? Right. So we've now pulled the Cessna 172K up onto the scales. These scales are load cell scales. They're aircraft specific. They're um, basically calibrated and uh, we keep them up to date that way so that we get a good accurate uh, reading. And, and a load cell scale will allow you to put it on a little bit off center one way or another and still give you a, a completely accurate reading. So now we're gonna go ahead and go over and read the actual weights once we get the airplane leveled. That's our next step. So now that we've uh, pushed the airplane on the scales, leveled it, we read the actual scale. This is the uh, left, the center, and the uh, right. So that would be your two mains and your nose. 
basically this one is bouncing around a bit because we just opened the hangar door and we're getting a little wind. You should always try to weigh them in a non-windy situation so that the lift and the push on the airplane doesn't change it. But uh, we, we had uh, closed the hangar door and we got a 629, 628, 435 is the actual weight of this aircraft. Now we'll go to the spreadsheet and actually do the quick calculation. So at this point we're going to go ahead and enter this data that we did on the on the worksheet into the computer. It's a simple spreadsheet but it's a form that we use repeatedly. It's got all the calculations and the formulas in there. And in this case, of course, we put the tack time and all of the information up at the top here as far as the end number and the model number and this is what goes in the logbook, goes in the permanent aircraft records. We come down to the left main. It was 629 pounds. The arm is 58 inches. That was on the aircraft records. We looked it up earlier. That's the distance between the datum, the reference point, and the main wheels. And the nose wheel was 435 pounds. And that arm is a minus 7. And that's pretty critical because the datum is a firewall. So the nose wheel is in front of the firewall, which makes it a minus number if it's behind the the datum point such as the main gear it makes it a positive number so we put that in we subtract out 228 pounds for the 38 gallons of usable fuel we come down to the bottom and we have our empty weight at 1464 pounds our center of gravity is 40.24 inches and the useful load on this aircraft is 836 pounds so with that being done we'll save this form uh, print it off and provide it to the aircraft owner for their records.